Yeah, I know, it's terrible. Well, it's so loud. Yeah, no, I lost the instruction manual. I don't know if there's a, oh, hi. Uh, hi, how's it going? I'm so sorry, I didn't see you there. Uh, Yorick and I were just talking about how loud the beeping on my microwave is. Uh, I, I know I can't go, I can't go back and unlose the instruction manual, buddy. Never mind. Sorry, thank you so much for joining us. This is the Shakespeare Lightning Round. I'm Ben Lauer, the Folgers Social Media and Communications Manager, and we are going to get together with a great guest today and uh, ask her 30 lightning fast questions about Shakespeare. We're going to get all of her Shakespeare likes, her Shakespeare dislikes, all of her Shakespeare hot takes. So we're so excited that you could join us today. Um, if you're ready, we will bring up our very first guest, and that is... That's Sam White, founding artistic and executive director of Shakespeare in Detroit. So let's bring Sam up here. Hi, Ben. Hi, Sam. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. It is so good to see you. Um, welcome to the Shakespeare Lightning Round. It's good to see you, too. Thank you for having me. You bet. Um, so for everybody out there who's watching, um, Sam White is calling us from Detroit today. Sam is an artist, an activist, and an entrepreneur from Detroit, Michigan. She's the founding artistic and executive director of Shakespeare in Detroit, the theater company that she founded in 2013. Um, Sam has been, as far as I can tell, everywhere. Um, she's worked as a director at Utah Shakespeare Festival in Cedar City, Utah, and at the Stratford Festival in Stratford, Ontario. She's held fo fellowships at the Old Globe and the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Um, she was part of the 2017 cohort at Arts Equity in their National Facilitator Training Program. She just completed the Director's Intensive at Yale University, um, which is, I, I think, if you sort of track all of those out, that's sort of every, a straight line across the country from Connecticut to Los Angeles. Um, and in addition to all of that, and uh, some of her many honors include um, an award from the mayor of Detroit in 2014 for excellence in theater. Um, Complex Magazine listed her as one of 10 forward-thinking entrepreneurs in Detroit. Um, and just last year, the Detroit News uh, listed her among its Michiganians of the year. Um, so we're so, so excited that you could join us for our very first episode. Sam, thanks for for playing along. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Can you hear me okay, Ben? Do I sound okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Can, do you want to tell us a little bit about where you are? Yeah, so I am uh, on an island called Belle Isle, which is um, a bit east in Detroit. And I'm actually, I'm going to try to show it to you, but I'm right, I'm juxtaposed between Detroit and Windsor, Ontario, Canada. So behind me right now, that, that's Canada. And then if I turn this way, that's Detroit. <laughs> um, that is so cool. Thank you for, for taking us on a walk. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to tell us a little bit? Of, I mean, how, how are you doing? How's Shakespeare in Detroit? And what are you guys sort of up to? We're, we're good. We're busy. We're um, working on um, digital educational modules for our um, Shakespeare STEAM program, which teaches third through 12th graders the science of lighting a production, the technology of sound design, the engineering of a form or costume, the art of classical performance, of course, and then the mathematics of building a set. So we're working on that. And also, I've been hosting a podcast for the last few weeks. So busy, yeah. busy. Yeah. Um, your podcast, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it, is the Power 15 podcast. Um, you guys just released a new episode today, right? That's right. Every week we have um, a person who's greatly influenced my work, and this week it's Chris Christman, who is a internationally acclaimed photographer. And um, you may have seen his photographs of um, Alan Cumming or Richard Branson, who, of course, is the founder of Virgin Mobile, Virgin Airlines. 
it's everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you, you know, past episodes that I, I've I've gotten to watch include uh, Margaret Atwood, um, who wrote The Handmaid's Tale, and Hag Seed, uh, our, our pal Barry Edelstein, who's the artistic director of um, The Old Globe in San Diego. Um, so, where can you tell people where to find Power Fifteen? Yes, you can listen to the podcast on Blog Talk Radio, but I always suggest that people watch on YouTube because then you can really get kind of, I think, the full grasp of these amazing people that I'm interviewing. And so if you just search Shakespeare in Detroit on YouTube, you can find us. You can find a lot of content, but most importantly and most recently, the Power 15 podcast. So, yeah, check it out. Um, great. I hope that everybody will do that. And, and um, when we finish with this, we'll save it uh, on our IGTV, and we'll, we'll make sure that we have a link to the Power 15 podcast there. Um, well, it's so good to see you, and it's so good to sort of see Detroit. Um, we were sort of talking yeah. about this. I'm terrible at geography, and so getting to see Detroit and then getting to see Canada, um, sort of like a stone-skipping distance away is really fun. It is. It is. It's really nice. If I could walk on water, I could go to Canada right now because otherwise we can't go. The, the border is kind of closed right now. But if I, oh, could, if I could walk across that, Canada is right there. Yeah. Yeah. And you were, you were staging, you were on the verge, correct me if I'm wrong, of staging the Merry Wives of Windsor in Windsor, right? That's right. In two and a half weeks, we were going to open the Merry Wives of Windsor in Windsor at the University of Windsor. And then the next weekend, we were going to play the show here in Detroit. And so um, I thought, well, I probably won't be able to go to Windsor this summer, but it's nice to look at it from afar and think about what could have been or what may be in the future. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I cannot wait for that that sort of tour of the Mary Wives of Windsor to happen. Um, I hope it's very soon. Me too. And it's in Windsor, right? It's, yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It's just the, everything is firing. It's all working together. Um, well, yeah, I hope that that happens very, very soon for y'all. Um, well, Sam, are you ready to play the Shakespeare lightning round? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Um, great. So, Sam, you are going to have, you're going to try and answer these questions for us. They're all, we want to hear all about your opinions on Shakespeare. And your goal is to try and answer them in as little time as possible. Uh, does that sound okay? That sounds great. I'm ready. I'm ready. Great. I'm going to get a stopwatch. I've got my laptop. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to get a stopwatch going. And it is time for the Shakespeare lightning round. <laughs> All right, Sam White, question one. What is your favorite Shakespeare play? A Midsummer Night's Dream. Ooh, good one. All right, most underrated Shakespeare play? Cymbeline. What's the most overrated Shakespeare play? Hamlet, sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Um, okay, we're gonna come back to that. What's your favorite sonnet? Um, a sonnet 18, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? I mean, come on, yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, favorite Shakespeare character? Um, probably, probably Goneril and Cordelia mashed together. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. Um, who's who's the worst, or or who is your least favorite Shakespeare character? Iago. Oh yeah. Um, best Shakespeare disguise, like the people dressing up. Um, Viola. Viola. Um, okay. Best couple in Shakespeare. Romeo and Juliet. Come on, we got to keep it classic. It's true. Keep um, okay. <laughs> Tell me about a lot. What's a line from Shakespeare that's like always kind of stuck in your head? It's always like rolling around in there. Well, right now, the last three months, it, it's been there's nothing good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. So really, kind of trying to focus on the positive. That's, That's it. good. Um, all right. The next section is either or. Give me your preferences. Hamlet or Lear? Lear. Ooh. Much Ado or As You Like It? As You Like It. Winter's Tale or Tempest? Tempest. Uh, Macbeth or Midsummer Night's Dream? Midsummer Night's Dream. 
Me too. Uh, all right, Henry the Fourth or Henry the uh, Sixth? Four. That's my lucky number. Uh, Richard the Second or Richard the Third? I'm going to go with the third. All right. Uh, Helena from A Midsummer Night's Dream or the Helena in All's Well That Ends Well? Helena from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Portia from Julius Caesar or the per P P P Portia from Merchant of Venice? Portia from Julius Caesar, definitely. Antonio from Twelfth Night or Antonio from The Merchant of Venice? Antonio from Twelfth Night, he's a lover. He is. Um, all right. Who's the best fairy in A Midsummer Night's Dream? Mustard seed, but that's just because I like them on my sandwiches. <laughs> um, yes, that's, that's, I love that. Um, all right, how do you personally spell loves, labors, lost? Like, does it have U's? Are there weird apostrophes? What do you got? I have to use the U. Canada's close by and they come to our shows, mm. so there's always a U. Uh, that's a great answer. How do you personally spell theater? Are you an ER person or an RE person? I'm an RE. Definitely an RE. Yes. When you go to the theater with an RE, what is your go-to snack, drink, or snack, drink combo when you go to the concession stand? Red wine, number one, with popcorn. There's no better combination, period. <laughs> what, um, popcorn toppings? A little bit of salt and a little bit of butter, and I'm good. And the red wine just tops it off. Classic. Beautifully. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, tell us about a piece of novelty Shakespeareana in your home. Like, tell me about a little Shakespeare thing you got. So this is very biased, but I have Shakespeare in Detroit items all over the place, like this shirt. Ooh, I love the branded merchandise. This is good. That's, right. <laughs> That's, right. That's what we all need in our houses. All right, okay. Shakespeare play. All right, to be totally honest, that you have never read or seen. Henry VIII. I just, I haven't. I know. Either. Uh oh. I, know. Um, I tried to once, but it didn't work out. Uh, I get it. Um, yeah. All right. What is the first Shakespeare production that pops into your head? Go. What, who, what, when, where? The Two Gentlemen of Verona, 2008, the Utah Shakespeare Festival. It was my first visit there, and that actually inspired Shakespeare in Detroit. So that's the one that lives in my heart and in my mind. Yes. Oh, that's a beautiful story. Um, so going back even farther, what was your very first experience with Shakespeare? So when I was eight years old, my mother banned rap music from our home. But of course, I tried to listen to uh, Salt and Peppa's Push It one day, and she caught me, knocked on the door, like the mean mother I thought she was. She isn't, but the mean mother I thought she was. And she handed me the complete works of William Shakespeare, and it took me eight summers, eight, to read the whole thing. But eventually, I finished it. Now you have. Shakespeare in Detroit, so it, I guess it worked, but it was punishment at the time. That was my and first it's really all salt and pepper based, which I think is really the key to this story, is that salt and pepper really were in there from the beginning. That's um, right. If I ever meet them, I have to let them know this. You have a story for them that you they inspired the whole Shakespeare company. That's right. Um, all right, Shakespeare play that you have always wanted to work on but never had the chance? Anthony and Cleopatra, that's because I'm, I'm reading a book about Cleopatra as we speak out here in the park, so Anthony and Cleopatra, definitely. I want to direct you soon, soon. Yeah. Um, soon, soon, I'm sure. Um, okay, so what would you be doing with your life if you weren't the artistic director of a theater company? I'd be a journalist, still a storyteller, but telling stories about people, you know, real people. Living in my neighborhood, probably. Yeah. Um, if you could travel back in time, so speaking of asking people questions, telling stories, if you could travel back in time and ask Shakespeare a question, what would it be? I'm doing this the way that you prefer Shakespeare to be done, right? If you like site-specific work, yes? Right, Billy? Yeah. <laughs> All right, and your very last question, 
What's a Shakespeare quote that inspires or brings you comfort? It's from Henry V. In peace, there is nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. In other words, there's a time and a place for everything. Yeah, that's it. I love that quote. <laughs> and that's it. That's the Shakespeare lightning round. You've done it. Yay! Yay! Um, <laughs> um, so, Sam, your time was seven minutes and 19 seconds. And because we've never done the Shakespeare lightning round before, that means you have the best time. <laughs> I won! Uh, Thank you so much for that. Is great. So wait, go, I want to go. I want to hear more about this story about your mom. Um, you are yes. You're clearly the winner. Um, you're the greatest Shakespeare Lightning Round participant we've ever had. <laughs> um, so yeah, wait. Go back and tell me about your mom. Do you remember? So she hands you the complete works. Uh, do you remember what like what edition it was and what you what did you say to her? I don't remember what edition it was, but it was filled with pictures. I still have it. It's so old, though, it doesn't have a cover because it belonged to my granddad, I guess, at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but the first play that I read, in, I started from the very beginning and had to read it until so it, I started at 8 and finished it at 16 because that's how long it took me. And um, I read, I think, 30, 36 36 plays, not 37, 36 of the plays. So I think the one that I didn't read was um, The Two Noble Kinsmen. That wasn't in there. That was Oh, there. interesting. Um, yeah. What was the first play in the book, I wonder? I think it was A Midsummer Night's Dream. I oh, think it interesting. Was a Midsummer Night's Dream, yeah. But it's, you know, it's my favorite play now, Ben, but I have to tell you, to be really honest, I hated it at the time because I was eight years old, you know, and I knew how to read and I was a pretty ferocious reader as a kid but Shakespeare was something that was totally um new and difficult for me at the time and I really started to love it due to repetition if you read something over and over and over and over and over again <laughs> then eventually you start to, to love it and I think just that um that book that she gave me I always tell people it wasn't just the book it was my inheritance you know it, it was the inheritance that my mother gave me and so for me it's much bigger than a book it's something that my mother gave me that i'll carry with me for the rest of my life and that's why i love shakespeare's theme ben because i get to introduce that same life-changing gift that my mom gave me to other kids in detroit and you can't i mean that's what it's all about to me anyway yeah um that's really great i think you know i feel like so many people have had that experience with Shakespeare that just sort of gripped them and then changed their lives in, in, in so many ways. Um, yeah. you're, talking really, about, you're, you're talking about a kid from Seven Mile who directed at the Utah Shakespeare Festival, you know, yeah. like, and, and it's all because of this book. And Salt and Peppa. And so, and so, okay, we can't forget Salt or Peppa. That's right. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we one thing that we we're, we're going to do on the Shakespeare Lightning Round is um, we want you to ask a question for our next guest that'll go into their Shakespeare Lightning Round, um, and we'll be we'll be sharing our next guest with everyone soon. So, do you have a question for the next episode of the Shakespeare Lightning Round? Oh, I do. I do. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna. I should write it down. Probably. Sorry. All right. This is, I got this it. This is difficult. This is difficult. Yeah. Sir Ian McKellen or Sir Patrick Stewart. Pick one. Ooh, this is a good one. If you could only work um, with one of them, who would it be? Um, if you could work with Gandalf or Jean Luc Picard, who would it be? Who would um, it be? Well, I hope that everyone who's watching will answer that in the comments for us. Um, and we will ask that of our next guest on the Shakespeare Lightning Round. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you. And, um, w w you know, do you want to tell anybody, everybody where they can learn more about Shakespeare in Detroit and what you guys are up to? 
Absolutely. Visit us at ShakespeareDetroit.com to learn more about us or on any of our social media channels. We're on Twitter at ShakesInTheD and then Instagram and Facebook at Shakespeare in Detroit. Fantastic. And we will share all of that um, probably in the link in our bio on uh, Instagram um, as well as the Power 15 podcast with your latest episode uh, dropping July 1st. I mean, today, right? So. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thanks for joining the Shakespeare Lightning Round. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sam. Bye. Thank you. Bye.